Hey everybody, it's David and Nikki Nellis for Foodie and the Beast. We've got some great excerpts from last Sunday's show, starting off with Stephen Fedorchak and Rob Valencia from Liberty Tavern. We also have Diane Gross and Carla Pitson. They're from Cork Market and they're pouring delicious wine. So stay with us. We'll be right back. Well, let's start with Diane and Khaled. You guys, okay. um, you know, we first have to mention your recent cover story in the Post. I know, and nice for shot. For a change, it wasn't about a scandal. <laughs> I guess, I guess you're not an elected <laughs> official, uh, but it was a great story uh, uh, about how new moms creatively juggle babies, home, work, and life, while even managing to eat well and take care of themselves. Now, how do you do it? <laughs> You gotta talk in the mic you, on that you one. Gotta actually, it's a radio show. <laughs> well, so. with, a, with a lot of help. Um, thankfully, we're in the business where we own our business, so we can take him with us and nobody can say no. Um, but, you know, great staff that helps us out running everything. Mm -hmm. uh, Colin and I are a team, and when I can't be with Marley, he's with Marley. You no, know, that's not what he says. <laughs> <laughs> he says he does it all. He says he does all the work. Yeah. He does a lot of the work. The husband's <laughs> lament. Um, and when I can't be at the restaurant, he's at the restaurant, and when he can't be there, I'm there. So it's really a team effort. Um, you know, we own the businesses together, so we run them together, and mm -hmm. and we take care of Marley together. So um, And Marley is probably going to have the most excellent palate ever. I hope so. Every time we taste... He's got a perfect nose. <laughs> He's got a cute nose. All right, so speaking of palettes, you brought a bunch of wines for us all to try we today. Have. So what are what we are focusing we on today? Um, today we're focusing on wines that we think are really nice for the spring as we're mm -hmm. going into the spring and early summer. Um, and wines that are fun to drink, um, you know, all year round, of course, but definitely like right now. Mm -hmm. um, we are, as you, I think, know, we focus at the restaurant on um, small production wines. Right. Wines that are fa usually done by um, family estates, mm -hmm. um, often sustainable, biodynamic, organic wines, and um, really limited production. So is it brought, hard to find those wines? I mean, what kind of research goes into finding those kinds of wines? Well, we, we, I think we're kind of lucky that we've got, uh, we, we work with a, a small set of distributors mm -hmm. who really go out. You can really lift off out. the mic. You can lift it. It moves. My wife's a little short there. So oh, that's I okay. Know. And we work with a small set of distributors who really go out and 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 work the field, as you say, you know, mm -hmm. like uh, the the, sh the former sh the shoe salesman Willie Loman. Now they go to vineyard to vineyard. Of course, they get to go to okay. instead of going to. So, do they grow shoes in a <laughs> field? Well, they have to wear them sometimes, oh, yeah. I guess. Uh -huh. But they, instead of going house to house in some you know, Des Moines, Iowa, they get to go to Volnay region in France and and other great pla you know great places. But they really you know again find these again these small family estate 
Um, the, all our wines are, our majority are state wines, and mm-hmm. we work with these small state wines, and you know, and bring them back to the U.S. And as Diane said, you know, it, it, it's a it's a fantastic list, unless you can't really find a lot of places here in D.C. for the size of our restaurant. All right, well, we're what did you just pour? I know it's bubbly. Um, it's bubbly. We always like to start with bubbles. So mm-hmm. um, this is a wine made by a producer named Jackie Blot, and he's a. Uh, very well known in the Loire Valley. This is a sparkling Chenin Blanc, mm-hmm. and it's called Triple Zero. Okay. And, um, and you sell this at the market? We sell this at the market. And how much does it go for? Oh my gosh, I should have remembered that. It's, it's free. Um, it's oh, free. Okay. No, it's around $20 if a you can guess the price, So it's really it's reasonable. <laughs> yeah. We have a really large um, grouping of sparkling wines that are between... 12 and $25 because mm-hmm. we think everybody should drink sparkling wine every day. So do I. And I'm right there with you. it should be affordable. So we have a very large selection of that. Excellent. Um, it's called Triple Zero because he doesn't use any sugar in the production of the wine. So it's mm-hmm. very dry. And um, he makes it like um, winemakers make champagne. So In the method. The champagne method. Exactly. All right. All right. Well, while we're sipping, we're going to turn to Stephen Fedorchak and Rob Valencia from uh, the, your, your a list of places. Your empire from Liberty Tavern to to uh, Northside Social. Northside Social, which I just went to for the first Lime time. Hall. I didn't. I didn't. You know, we're Marylanders, but I drove by there. And I stopped and picked up breakfast for me and Nick when we were cutting the show last time. Awesome. I hope you enjoyed it. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. Well, so, Stephen, let's just talk. You have three restaurants, almost like in a triangle, in uh, Clarendon. Correct, yep. Uh, So tell us a little bit about just each concept, because they're very different from each other. They are, though, you know, hopefully what we aspire to is uh, a unifying theme of of friendliness and Mm -hmm. hospitality. They very much are neighborhood places, and... You know, that's the real enjoyable part. I actually live a block away, so it's really a square in some regards. <laughs> um, but Liberty Tavern is... Well, next time I go, I'll, I'll make the full circuit. There you go, I'll do exactly. the whole thing. Just give me a heads up. Right. Um, Liberty Tavern's a classic American tavern that has a lively bar and lounge on the first floor mm-hmm. and then a more refined dining room on the second floor. Mm-hmm. And it's located in a uh, 1900 era structure that we rehabilitated. Mm-hmm. Um, executive chef Liam La Civita, and he's been on before. And yeah, he's great. He's involved with all three restaurants as well, but that was our first restaurant, and that's been open four years. Mm-hmm. And then last April, uh, 12 days apart, we opened up Lion Hall at Northside Social. Twins. And I don't, you had twins. I don't <laughs> recommend doing that. Um, <laughs> it was construction dictated, but Lion Hall is a French brasserie mm-hmm. uh, with about 90% French wines, a very similar wine philosophy to what was just described. Of course. Um, mm-hmm. Exactly. And uh, 20 beers on tap and classic uh Brasserie bistro cuisine with a strong Alsatian influence. So what is it? So lots of sausages. I mean, we tell us have, a little bit about that menu. We do six to seven handmade sausages on the menu at any given time. Mm-hmm. You can also get bistro brasserie classics like steak frites, like French onion soup. Yeah. But there's also um, our our chef de cuisine there, Andy Bennett, worked uh, for Daniel Ballou for six or seven years, and there's a strong influence of classic French technique throughout the menu as well. So, so not a bad resume. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Yeah. I thought after last night's meal I would never eat again, but I'm starting to get hung- I'm just starting well, to get good. hungry. <laughs> well, you know, we'll bring it over to the sweet side. It's funny because we had the opportunity to open up Northside Social in mm-hmm. what was formerly Murky Coffee, right. which we were all very loyal patrons of. Mm-hmm. and. Yeah, we we aspired to do coffee as well, or to get close to doing it as well as Murky, because they did a brilliant job with coffee. But we also felt there was opportunities to do some more with that business and with that space. And that's also a a 1900-era building, um, former firehouse, got a great history. So we have a wine bar on the second floor of that. It still serves a tremendous amount of coffee. And then to our surprise... I didn't know there was a wine bar upstairs. I had no idea. The official tagline is... uh, Northside Social Coffee and Wine, if I oh, may. Okay, um, yes, you may. How yeah. about it? Way to plug, go, plug, Nikki. Plug. Yeah, exactly. I like that. Uh, and then, um, you know, to our surprise, it kind of turned into a restaurant as well. So it's in an old house, and I really like that image of a coffee house and all mm-hmm. that that connotates in terms of people sitting around reading, acoustic music two or three times a week. We have an open mic night on Sunday night. Oh, God, don't say that out loud. Yeah, well, it's always bustling, and that's the fun part. I will do great balls of fire for you right now. <laughs> but you know what I like? I like, like I said, Sunday night, not Sunday morning. Oh, so. I'm busy. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Thank no, you No, but it, it, I like, I mean, you just, your location is everything, and it's almost like the Flatiron Building. It's on that, that triangular, you know. Yeah, that's a good analogy. 
interesting. stick of yeah. land. Yeah. Well, so speaking of pedigrees, Rob, you certainly have a nice resume of places that you've been. Tell I've been us on a, the run for years. You have. Okay, right. And we have found you. So now tell us a little bit about where you've been, how you wound up here, and you are really doing desserts for three very different concepts. <laughs> Well, that draws from, uh, I've lived in three very different re regions. Uh, grew up uh, originally in Texas, mm -hmm. moved to uh, San Francisco, so I got to experience the whole West Coast uh, uh, slow food cuisine and um, farm to table in its infancy, mm -hmm. and then moving to New York City for the hustle and bustle, and then tying that all together. So it's, uh, I'm just really, really passionate about American cuisine. Right. So it's, uh, it was wonderful seeing Liberty Tavern and be able to do a lot of research and just focus on, like, just like some real hidden classics that bring them uh, bring them back. From so, America. what would you say are some of like the stalwarts of Liberty Tavern's dessert menu? Oh, we always have a pie on there. We always mm -hmm. have a donut on there. Mm -hmm. We always um, um, our chocolate brownie has gone through so many different incantations. Really? Yeah, we we change it about once a month. Well, how I mean, to a guy that loves. Chocolate brownies. I mean, how do you make it different so that it's? I mean, what are the differences? I just love. I, you know, I want to dig in and taste the chocolate and have my eyes roll back. It, in do, my head. Does it change so often because you're you're constantly playing and you like to have fun, or do you just think you're making it better? Uh, the first part. I just like to have fun. Okay. And also, a lot of my food is uh, seasonally driven. Mm -hmm. um, as okay, but brownies aren't really seasonal. <laughs> but I always have to do you something. Eat them anytime. They are if you believe in four seasons. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay. No, it, it, in fact. Um, I always have to have some sort of fruit on the plate. Okay. Uh, you always have to. You always have to eat your vegetables with dinner. Right. I think. So especially with the brownie, it's always it's always changing depending on what's what's what you season. got going on. All right, we have to take a quick break, but when mm. we come back, I want to find out more about the stuff you're doing at Northside Social because it's just delicious, and you brought in all these goodies here, and I want to know more about it. Relax, David. <laughs> <laughs> this is David and Nikki Nellis with Foodie and the Beast. When we come back, we'll be sipping wines, we'll be eating some pastry, and we'll be talking gluten free. We'll be back in just a sec. All right, you're back on Foodie and the Beast with David and Nikki Nellis. Stephen, mm -hmm. I, well, first yes, of all, I, I, Rob, I mean, I've got a, a, a mouthful of cinnamon, I don't know, what is it? It's not a cinnamon cupcake. What it, is it? It's a, a wa walnut, uh, walnut cinnamon coffee cake muffin. This is so delicious. delicious. I'm, not, what's, mm, I'm eating God. a savory scone. You're eating a cheddar chive scone. Mm. I'm getting a sugar so high. Good. <laughs> okay, well, you didn't tell people who we're speaking with. Do you want no, to bring it in properly? Stephen Fedorchak and Rob Valencia. I did. Mm -mm. Go ahead. From Northside Social. N Northside Social. Lion, Lion Hall. Lion Hall. And Liberty Tavern. And Liberty Tavern. There you go. You're not giving me a chance to get oh, it out. Well, it takes you a long time. All right. So, Rob, <laughs> when we um, left for a break, we started talking about all these fabulous things you brought in. Now, these are things you make specifically, excuse me, at Northside Social? Yes. And there's also some uh, some uh, crossbreeding with uh, Lion Hall for our brunch. Okay. Okay. Uh, such as our donuts and our granola, mm -hmm. but basically for uh, Northside Social, we're doing like just real classic American um, typical bakery items. Right. We do pies. We do about six types of muffins, eight types of uh, New England scones, fourteen types of cookies, and we offer twelve types of bread for retail. Wow, fourteen types of cookies. Yes, that's a lot, and they're big cookies. They're huge. But yeah, we. You know, I'm I am fanatical about cookies. Are you? I absolutely love cookies. In fact, fourteen is not enough for me. What's your favorite? My favorite right now is our oatmeal cranberry. It, it's gone through about seven different permutations. This guy right here. Oh, that's a that's a that's a scone. scone. That's a scone. Mm -hmm. 
He doesn't yeah. know his scones from his cookies. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Clearly, he's That's what I'm here for. I'm going right, to eat right, all of them. You. It won't matter once they get in there. Yeah, keep shoving it down there, huh? Yeah, it's got about <laughs> five different types of dried fruit in it, mm -hmm. and it's a uh, really rich brown sugar uh, crispy cookie. Excellent. Um, and now let's just talk about Lion Hall, because I know you guys do brunch there mm -hmm. on Sundays. Um, Saturdays as well. Oh, Saturdays and Saturdays as well. as well. See, look, something else I learned today, too. Um, what kind of pastries are you doing there, though, normally? Like, what is a dessert like there at Lion Hall? Are we're, you sticking with a French theme? We're doing the a French theme, but we're really doing something, just a completely different twist on it. Because especially since we're a French brasserie, you usually just have the creme brulee and a little ramekin. Done. Hey, done. Right. A uh, bowl of chocolate mousse and, so, and some sorbet. That's it. That's what mm -hmm. you usually get. Here, we took some of those ideas, and we really modernized it. We mm -hmm. try to do, like, a more elevated um, design on them. So, like, our... Our chocolate mousse is in a bar form. It's served on top of a God. caramel chocolate uh, rice crispy treat, mm -hmm. kind of like a star crunch. Uh, and, and I can see you didn't bring any of that in. I was just going to say, why isn't that in? <laughs> You're out. Next. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Wow. No, I'm joking. That sounds delicious. And, and our creme brulee is served like free form. It's like out of out of the dish. It's a molded custard. Um, served with uh, fried beignets, just to add just a little twist to it. I have one question. Why isn't it Lyon Hall? Because Americans can't speak French? No, that, that's actually a great question, and many people do pronounce it Lyon Hall until they realize it's Lion Hall. The <laughs> building um, is named for the architect and for probably Arlington's most prominent re real estate developer in the post-World War II era, whose name was Francis Lyon. Oh, okay. So, so there you go. it's in the neighborhood that borders Lyon Village and mm -hmm. Lyon Park, two neighborhoods named after him. Mm -hmm. And this was a building that he designed and then inhabited. So it's as just well. a convenient coincidence. Exactly. Yeah. For and your so brasserie. you brought in this gorgeous bread. Do you bake all the breads in all your restaurants? Yes, we do. Okay, what did you bring in? Uh, this is our Claritin and sourdough. Mm -hmm. um, Gorgeous, the size I of a just salmon. Like rip it, yeah, <laughs> rip it open. Um, I, I, I'm just absolutely passionate about bread. This is this is a natural sourdough. We mm -hmm. have our own uh, uh, starter culture that we grow and feed every single day, mm -hmm. and that's a building block for about three of our breads. Cool. And. While we're serving 12 breads, selling 12 breads at uh, Northside Social, we do 18 breads for the entire company. So That's everything great. from the lobster roll. So is there a commissary where you do all this? Ooh, there's a small table in the Lion Hall kitchen. Okay, I was really? just curious. <laughs> well, we joke around, too, that no one has keys to Northside Social because it's open from 7 in the morning until 1 at night anyway. But right. then there's people baking there's just, overnight and everything else. Yes. So, yeah, there's... Really well, no listen, need for security. I want to thank you guys so much for coming in and bringing in all these delicious treats. It's just so good of you. So let's do it delicious. one more time. Stephen Fedorchak and Rob Valencia of Liberty Tavern, Lion Hall, and Northside Social, all in Clarendon. Correct. Right. And if you haven't been to any of those, I, the, the, the one time. place I haven't been is Lion Hall, but I'm heading there. That well, you got to go in there for a donut plate for brunch. Okay. <laughs> all right. well, well, nice that's to see you. This is David and Nikki Nellis with Foodie and the Beast. We're going to be drinking some wine and talking baby cakes. We'll be back in just a sec. We're back with David and Nikki Nellis on Foodie and the Beast. Before we uh, move on with the show, I just want to thank the people that make the show possible. The folks at Georgetown Bagelry, uh, Neighborhood Restaurant Group, that's the two Rusticos, Evening Star, Tallulah Vermilion, Buzz Bakery, Columbia Firehouse, Birch and Barley, and Church Key, our friends down at Founding Farmers and Farmers and Fishers on the Georgetown Waterfront, and the folks at Modus Hospitality, Noti Bianchi, Dish, Circle Bistro, and our newest sponsor, Charles Schwartz and Son Fine Jewelers. Jewelers found us. <laughs> How about that? So, Diane and Carla, let's go back to you. Now, you just, n not too long ago, I'm, I'm guessing it was like eight or nine months ago, opened up the Cork Market, right? No, it's been more than that. How a little long longer ago, but a little over a year. Right. Okay, eight or nine months, a year. 
You gonna mess with me now, man? <laughs> so, so and, and you've got that gave you the space to do a lot more events and right. the opportunity to do. To, uh, to give us the rundown on what's well, coming up. Well, you guys up. have blind makers in all the time, don't you? We do. We have a great. Uh, the, the market is two floors. The, mm-hmm. the upstairs floor actually houses a real office. If for those who has a restaurant. You know, your office space gets sacrificed for everything. This is my mm-hmm. office. Right here. My laptop is my office. Yeah, the last one, the last one was stolen out of her car. So. Keep it with me 24-7. Yeah. Um, but it has a great event space. Again, kind of keeping the feeling of cork and that kind of accessible, homey feel. It's got exposed brick, great sunlight, a little couple of skylights up front. And we do a number of events there from... From wine wine classes we do regularly mm-hmm. to wine tastings, former wine tastings, to wine dinners, to book signings, you know. Receptions. Uh, receptions. We've done weddings. bridal showers, yeah. wedding showers, wedding I've receptions. I've never seen the space upstairs, so I'm going to have to go check it yeah, out. Yeah, I, mean, I love the market. Well, you the market know, something interesting about you guys. Now, you weren't the first in the turn on 14th Street, but you guys have really been sort of leaders in the renaissance of 14th Street, which was, you know, just sort of this, this haphazard makeshift group of... You know, bizarre retail, and now I mean, uh, I mean, the studio theaters there and all of that. But you guys have t- two retail operations there that do big business, and they're very, you know, it's a very, you know, high end intellectual offering that wasn't the on that question? street. What's the question? Well, no, I'm just saying. Thank I mean, you. why why did you pick 14th Street? Why not someplace else? Well, uh, we live off 14th Street. Logan Circle is our home and our new son's home. So it was laziness. Yeah. <laughs> Being able to walk to work. It's Being the best able to walk thing. to work. <laughs> you well, know. Not to mention, I think lots of people say, God, I wish I had a great place to get a glass of wine and a, some good food near my house that I can walk to. I mean, it's such a yeah. gift. And to that's, have. that's yeah. how we felt, and that's why we did it. Well, as Todd said, it's a, it was an underserved area, you know, an right. area where people went other places to go but for But the dining. point, you've served as a magnet in a way. Estadio is down there now, and, and Birch and Barley's there now, and, I mean, they're, they're, it's Masa, a great... that new taco place. I mean, yeah. there's yeah. a lot. It's, it's almost like it's an amazing. outdoor food mall, in a way, where you go down, and, and there are all these choices. Well, it's I think 14th is going to turn to... Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to say, a destination for dining. I mean, and that's, mm-hmm. I think, a great, a wonderful thing for our neighborhood, and... So you can, I mean, we don't leave the neighborhood most often. Well, the next so. thing you need to do is put a parking lot on the top of the third <laughs> place. <laughs> the building. That's the other problem. All right, well, let's talk about the wines that you brought in. So this rosé, it, it's like drinking beautiful. roses. Yeah. It's just beautiful. It's very floral. It has um, great, um, as Khaled said, minerality and salinity to it mm-hmm. because the vineyards are actually... They run into the water, essentially, hmm. and um, it gets these great winds and just the air that helps these great Let's go on grow. a field trip. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Wouldn't that be lovely? All, all expenses paid. <laughs> Preferably. We'll work on finding somebody to do that for us. Excellent. I love that. Um, so it's really, I mean, it's a, it's a serious rosé. It's mm-hmm. got a lot of complexity to it. Um, you know, it, the problem with rosé, I always think, is that when you pour yourself a glass of rosé, people are like, are you drinking white Zinfandel? Yeah. No. No. It's and people come in. We have a very large offering of rosés, both mm-hmm. at the restaurant and at the market. And people come in and they're like, "Well, I don't want a sweet wine." And we're like, "Take your pick, because right, none of them are." It's not sweet at all. But that's a common misconception, I think. All right. So tell us about the last one you're going to pour. Well, the last one we decided to go to Italy, leaving Spain. Uh, we're pouring a red wine called Pezzalunga. David, mm-hmm. can you say Pezzalunga? Si, Pezzalunga. <laughs> si, Paolo Italiano. <laughs> um, but it's Bandera Barbera. Are, are two, two of the grapes. Again, it keeps with that uh, minerality, which I don't say very well, particularly for two glasses of wine. <laughs> minerality. <laughs> but wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait. Andy has a breathalyzer. Right? <laughs> <laughs> DC cops, I will not be you driving. You're driving your kid home. <laughs> <laughs> but again, it's, it's plummy, it's smoky, and again, I think it, it shows the depth and the vastness of the wines you can find at, uh, excuse me, at Cork Wine Bar. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, and these, so, thank you. all the wines that you serve at the market, are they also available at the restaurant? I think about 95% of the wines are there. There are some that are just, the batches are so small that we, mm-hmm. it doesn't bring, it's not worth it to bring it over to the market because we, you know, we'll have maybe a case of it, it'll be gone. Did I miss, what region is this from? Uh, this is Italian wine. Yeah, yeah, but where in Italy? This is the... Uh, Alcepo Pavese, yeah. which is northern Italy, mm-hmm. and actually this, we talk about family-run estates. This estate has been in this family since 1808, Wow! Um, and these are really old vines of um, indigenous Italian varietals. I which don't know that. Is I that love in, stories is, like that. I love wines that have real history. I just think it's it just shows the passion that gets you know passed down through time. I like that. And this is um, a wine that we get through an importer um, named Neil Rosenthal, who mm-hmm. does 
it brings in amazing wine. Well, that's a real Italian name. Um, <laughs> nice Jewish guy from, Rab- from New York. Rabbi Neil from Rosenthal York. from Italy. Nice Jewish guy from New York. Um, but this is one of the original estates when he got in the business, you know, 30 plus years ago that he went to and has been bringing it in. And it's um, it's just very traditionally made. It's a beautiful wine. Mm. All right. All right. Just lastly, because for people who haven't been to your market, you also serve food there that's for, like, pickup. Great desserts and charcuterie and things of the like. Just tell us a little bit about it quickly. Well, quick, quickly, I think you, you come in for anything from a sandwich to something to complement your uh, your meal at night from from retail objects from uh, from pastas to sauces mm-hmm. to soups you know kind of salads and other other sides for macaroni and cheese is comforty food with macaroni and cheese and fried chicken that've been written up in the in the uh, in magazines to 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 asparagus and other different. But you know things. what's great about this because back even. 15, 10 years ago, there's sort of replacement meals, you know, for people who worked and wanted to stop and pick it up. If you you walked past Sutton Place, you were going to miss it. There was nobody else doing it. And now to have that in a neighborhood is fabulous for you these people. You could come out to our neighborhood, <laughs> too. You could. Well, I we, the space we deliver. For you. Okay. But we try to, <laughs> Not we, uh, out to Kensington, you do All right. Well, guys, tell everybody where Cork and Cork Market are so they can be sure to know and come see you. Um, Cork Wine Bar is located at 1720 14th Street. And Cork Market is just up the street at 18... Across the street. Across the street and up the street at 1805 14th Street. I don't want anybody to miss it. And um, the tasting room, which is our private event space that you both talked about, is upstairs from the market. Terrific. Thank you for for coming in. All right, so as we do on every show, we like to point out a specific charity. And since it's Mother's Day... We thought that this one made sense. Yeah, because moms need love. Becky's Fund is a nonprofit dedicated to domestic violence awareness and prevention, and uh, their mission is simply to foster awareness of domestic violence and occur- encourage advocacy among peers and, uh, and have educational programs so that we lessen the incidence of domestic violence. And it is a local organization, so you can get involved by, of course, donating funds, but also volunteering. They're always looking for people to help. And all you have to do is go to Becky's, B-E-C-K-Y-S, fund.org. Great. And as we do on every show, we like to leave you with a little quote. Yeah, this is a, an homage to Todd and Ellen Gray's new restaurant, Watershed, from my favorite <laughs> author, Anonymous. <laughs> And he said, (laughs) give a person a fish and you feed him for a day. Teach that person to use the internet and they won't bother you for weeks. But I'm bummed. Thank you very much. (laughs) This is David and Nikki Nellis. Have a delicious week. See you next week.